Bwana aku bariki na aku linde aku angazie uso wake na kukufadhili aku enulie uso wake na kukupa amani the video even as we proclaim the words of this powerful song I 
Lord, your promises to us are yes in you and amen. And this morning, oh God, as we gather to talk about um, something that will obviously make uh, Satan very, very mad, we ask that you'd protect this broadcast. We ask that you'd also cover us with your precious blood and hide us. We armor up, oh God, putting on the full armor of God. We put on the helmet of salvation. Come on, go and armor up. You can just repeat what I'm saying. I put on the helmet of salvation. I put on the breastplate of righteousness. I tie my waist with the belt of truth. I shod my feet with the preparation to preach the gospel of peace. I raise up the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. I raise up the shield of faith. And I take my position even as I pray for all the saints with all kinds of prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Where will you find that? In Ephesians chapter 6, okay? So that's how you armor up. That's how you put on the armor of God. One of the other ways that I do it, especially if I'm running and, and I realize I've not put on the armor of God because that is our clothing in the spiritual realm, is I, I say, Father, I put on the armor of God through Christ Jesus the King and according to Ephesians chapter 6, and I take my position, okay? So just as quick as that as well. But uh, before you know what the armor of God is, it's good to say it. It's good to say it. It's best to say it. And normally for me, I find that I work, I work like this. I work, I'll go to the helmet. I'll go to the breastplate. I'll go to the belt of truth. I'll go to the, the, the whatever, the, um, the shodding of the feet to the preparation to preach a gospel. Then I'll raise up the shield of faith. And the reason why I laughed a little bit is because I always raise up the shield of faith before I raise up the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And I've taught about this as well. These sermons are available on YouTube in terms of the armor of God, what each one represents, what, what it means. They're on our YouTube channel. I really encourage you to go to that YouTube YouTube channel. There are so many things that a number of you keep on asking. We've preached about them, we've talked about them, and all that. Um, I want to begin by welcoming you onto this broadcast. Um, it looks like we're in a smaller stadium today uh, for the early risers. I am not known to be an early riser in terms of an early morning um, um, uh, broadcast. Um, I tend to be a late night uh, person, so I tend to, 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 to be asleep at this time a lot of times. But um, in a season when the Lord is doing something in my life, I normally find that he wakes me up a lot about 1 a.m., 2 a.m. there. So I, I just spend time in his presence and I barely sleep because there's something he's doing. So and it's wonderful to see so many of you, dear friends, and of course, you know, um, Sozo family. Um, I can see Liz is here reacting and saying, oh, I found it. <laughs> Thank you all so much for checking in and, um, uh, you know, uh, just anyway, encouraging ourselves once again in terms of, um, you know, we can't say I'll see you tomorrow and those kind of things, but it is well, it is well with the righteous. So we hold on to that. It is well with the righteous. So karibuni sana, all right? Um, there are going to be many of you, I guess, who are catching this a bit later. Um, please forgive me. And, and, and I guess just to be asking the Holy Spirit, you know, in the event that this is happening eh, and you like to be live, so just ask, um, wake me up, Lord, on this. <coughs> Sorry, my voice is not very loud this morning, but I believe that you're hearing me well. Um, yeah, so um, I needed to start from somewhere. I want to share with you something that my sister, Pastor, um, Pastor Katini, um, uh, shared shared with me or shared with a number of us I think and this is something she quoted she said I learned something that prayer is a transaction you give God your burdens and he gives you his yoke which is light you never come out empty 
something happens on the inside of you. I would add, um, gives you his yoke, which is light, and then gives you his burden, because eh? his burden is easy. Um, and his burden is about um, what he would like you to do and what he'd like you to say. I found that quotation very, very um, powerful and very, very deep. Um, that prayer is a transaction, prayer is a transaction. And, and everything in the spirit realm, by the way, is a transaction. And when I say that Lucifer is a senior, um, senior, we call them counsels, um, or sometimes we, call, we will call them lawyers, but normally, like in our law, law class, we call each other counsel, okay? So he's a senior counsel. A senior counsel is, you know, you, there are people who are senior counsels in this, in this country. So, you know, um, my, no name is popping up at the moment. It's very early in the morning and I've not slept much, so I'm not going to say no name, lest also I'm trying to, like, market for anybody. So, um, so there are usual councils and then there are junior councils and then there are senior councils. But basically senior council is like a top, top, top person. But not only is Lucifer a senior council, and I'm not saying this to praise him. I'm, I'm saying this um, to set the stage for what I'm going to talk about because there is another council as well. Um, so Lucifer is, is, is a, the prosecutor, okay? So he's the prosecutor and a prosecutor is a, a, a senior lawyer who represents a government okay so he represents the government of darkness he represents his own government which is below uh, underneath our feet so also even as i say it some of you i know you're scared of the devil so there's nothing to be afraid of there's nothing to panic about there's nothing to start thinking oh my goodness you know but what i need you to do is to know that uh, it's important that we know our enemy one of the things god taught me in spiritual warfare <clears throat> is that when when i know my enemy then I know, I will know from him, from God, folks, God, God reveals the enemy, then if I know my enemy, then God also will reveal to me which weapons of warfare to use. Remember the Bible says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty in God to the pulling down of strongholds. So it means we have very many weapons. So one of the things that as a warrior, because children of God are warriors and, you know, we are warrior brides, you know, so we put on our clean garments and our nice white, um, you know, robes that are washed in the blood of Jesus Christ as we prepare ourselves for the return of our Messiah. Um, but at the same time, we are also putting on the full armor of God. I can, you can just imagine how we look in the spirit realm. Um, and you do have to armor up. As a child of God, you do have to armor up. So normally I'll talk about armoring up or I'll talk about um, suit up, you know, suit up, put on your suit. And as a child of God, that is a basic thing. And how frequently do you put on the suit? How frequently do you put on the armor of God? You put on the armor of God every 24 hours. Again, I want to encourage you, um, just check for uh, the broadcast. Let me see if I can find it. Um, so that then also, um, or maybe somebody, uh, one of our social members, if you could just uh, help me. I've, I've seen a number of ministry team members. If you can just be checking on YouTube whether you can see it, um, probably entitled The Armor of God. Hopefully I didn't call it anything else. Uh, some of you may remember what it is. Please help me and then you can post it. Then we can just, um, we can, so that people can easily access it after this. But as a child of God, you have to learn to put on the armor of God. Um, our physical clothes are very useless in the spiritual realm. Eh? In fact, if anything, um, you know, from what I've learned in terms of just listening to uh, testimonies of people who God has delivered from Satanism, is that when they look at people, they, they don't see the clothes they're wearing, okay? So they're not going to see me in a hoodie. So when they look at people, what they'll see is that they will look at someone and they'll say, um, you know, uh, apparently they can tell, those who walk in darkness can tell, who is born again and who is not born again. So apparently when they look at someone who is born again, they are dressed in white. So then, as in God has dressed us in robes of white. But remember the Bible also says, put on, put on Christ, okay? So basically we are clothed. Um, and, and, and really this takes us back to the Garden of Eden where Adam and Eve sin and then they realize that they are naked and instead of running to God, they, they decide to hide, um, you know, and, and, and God actually does the first, uh, there's actually the first, um, what is it called, the first altar is raised in that place and it's raised by God himself, um, which was the altar of, of just, um, you know, covering, covering them. Um, uh, in terms of God actually took, um, what is it called? God actually 
you know, cover them with clothes of, uh, with skins of animals, okay? So th those were their first clothings. But then he asked them, who told you you're naked? But then my first online broadcast was about who told you you're naked. If you've not seen it, you do need to listen to it. Um, I was a bit, you know, not, not as, 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 I guess, confident as I am today in terms of preaching, but maybe I do look confident. Um, but uh, it, it's, it's a someone that still encourages me today. Who told you you're naked? And I think every believer should begin there. Who told you you're naked? Because part of what Satan will use in terms of accusation is what we confess. So when Adam and Eve sinned, um, obviously the, the accusation fell immediately because they sinned. Okay, So the first accusation was they doubted God. Then the second accusation was that now they sinned. Then now the third accusation became that they hid. And then the fourth accusation became that they were saying we are naked you know, they're, that they're hiding because they are naked, so hiding from God. I had a, a, an interesting experience with God this morning. Uh, I shared quite a bit of something last night in terms of love and everything, and my heart was pretty heavy yesterday, and it's not heavy today, I bless the Lord for that. I think sometimes also Satan really puts on us accusations and condemnation, and it can be very hard on myself, even as I'm being very hard on other people. And, um, you know, so part of what the Lord kept ministering to me yesterday was about, you know, there's a, the, the, the Bible talks about there is a, a godly sorrow that leads to repentance, but the worldly sorrow, sorrow, the worldly sorrow leads to condemnation. So also I want to encourage you to do that. You know, I'm very honest on, on screen. Um, when it involves other people, I try not to, to, to be as honest uh, because I, I want to kind of figure out how to make sure that I don't involve them in that because they probably don't want um, their life to be talked of um, in such a way. Uh, but um, I tend to be quite honest about myself and I guess I'm not your conventional pastor because I don't come across as strong, tough, I mean I have my days, but if I'm not okay, I'll tell you I'm not okay. Uh, but I, th I believe that the reason the Lord leads me to do it that way is so that you can learn. Okay, so that you can learn, but of course, so that also you don't exalt me in any form or, me or way and just know that I'm just a vessel and you can be a vessel as well. Okay, so it's part of the reason why I share so that you can learn. So the next time that you're dealing with a situation, you will remember that day that I shared with you about the godly sorrow that leads to repentance, uh, but also the worldly sorrow that leads to condemnation. So that way you're able to speak up and say, I am feeling that this grief that I'm feeling towards this sin and this issue that I'm having is not the godly sorrow that leads to repentance. It's starting to sound like the, the, the worldly sorrow that leads to condemnation. So, because remember when we sin, we've got to be able to see sin the way God sees sin. And, and, and God gets very grieved when we sin. Um, one of the things I do need to share is that uh, the day before yesterday, um, I, I was in my room and, and uh, something happened um, and uh, all of a sudden God opened my eyes. Eh? So God opened my eyes. It was more of a, a, a thought that I had that was not um, glorifying of God in terms of, of somebody, let me put it that way. So. Um, all of a sudden, and I was really kind of holding on to that thought, you know, that was not loving, that was not kind, that was not, you know, all those things about the word of God. But, you know, you're thinking it's a, it's a thought, it's, you know, it's an attitude, but you're, you're those ones of entitled, you know, offense. That's offense. Offense is terrible, you know, and, and, it's, a, and it's a trap. Um, it's really the bait of Satan. And if you haven't gotten that book by, um, uh, I think it's by John Bevere or, or by Lisa, one of them, but it's called The Bait the, the, the bait of Satan. It's one of the books I have in my house. I've never really read it, but somebody gave it to me. And it was a very young person who gave it to me, but it was a teenager who, who gave it to me. I'd never heard of it. And, and it was very interesting that she gave it to me. But Offense is one of those things you have to be very, very careful about. It's one of the traps that Satan will use against you and he will actually condemn you. Because the Bible says in Psalm 119 verse 165 that I love the laws of God and therefore I cannot be an offended. So if you love the word of God, if you love the laws of God, you, can, you actually become unoffendable. Okay, so... Yeah, depending on your personality type, and it's important that you know your personality type. Another book I would recommend on this and understanding your personality type is um, Why We Act the Way We Do, yeah, by Tim LaHaye. Why We Act the Way We Do. Somebody gave it to me as a teenager, um, and I began to understand a few things about why I act the way I do. So, in terms of your personality types, and if you guys would like me to take you through like personality types and everything, it's something I'll be very happy to take you through. But um, these are things I'm recommending for you to read and to go through in terms of growing. Um, as a child of God, if you, uh, if I was to show you my home, I probably have about I probably have about six shelves in this house, 
um, we have very many books. We do, we do a lot of books. We are readers. And a lot of things that God speaks to me about is about books. I hardly ever finish them. But, um, you know, I tend to go back to it in a situation that I'm in something and all that. And I learned that, that we learn a lot from books, uh, specific books. You know, don't be careful about books also because some books don't really glorify God. So, like, you know, you, you hear things like, I think there's a book that somebody um, uh, once gave me called Triumphing at the Gates of the Stars. And I started to read it. And, and a lot of them, no offense meant to our Nigerian brothers, but a lot of times they're, these ones written by the West Africans. And as you begin to read it, you're like, I, this book. Anyway, so just be careful. Because also the reading material, or, or let me put it as the material you bring to your home, can also bring an accusation to your home. Yeah? So the material you bring to your home can also bring accusation to your home. So one of the accusations that Satan will normally use is things like witchcraft. So if you have witchcraft material, if you have satanic material, so we don't encourage for you to study Satan. Okay, so don't 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 study uh, demonology so that then you can understand your your enemy. Uh, who is actually the enemy of God, the Holy Spirit will always teach you what you need to know. But I always emphasize that Satan is not our business as children of God. If you get very caught up in things to do with Satan, you can really magnify him. And then what you do is that God is not as magnified as, as Satan. And so you're very focused. And I don't know if you know people who, um, you know, all they do is every time is they're binding, they're binding, they're binding. And it's okay to bind, but it doesn't mean that no prayer can end without you binding. Okay. And, and there are things you don't bind. Like, for example, you can't say I bind you, Satan. It's, it's not one of those things you can say and and it's actually uh, uh, it's, it's it's even unbiblical you know because even uh, the bible says that um, uh, you know that, that i'm just trying to paraphrase that you know michael michael said the lord rebuke you so he did not lift up himself even though he was you know michael being the archangel um, and being so senior and having been you know a core core laborer with with lucifer and they were at the same level um but you know uh, Michael did not say, I bind you. He said, the Lord, the Lord rebuke you. Yeah, the Lord rebuke you. And, 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 and um, one of the ways that I pray when it comes to that, I say, you know, Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. Uh, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. You know, so, so there are things you don't do. And, and there are ways that we've learned to pray that are very ineffective. Remember the, the, the fervent, um, uh, fervent and effective prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Eh? The fervent and effective prayer of a, a righteous person availeth much. Uh, and um, maybe we do need to get more and more into, into prayer. Uh, in terms of, um, in, sorry, in terms of talking more about prayer, but you'll find it in a lot of sermons that I've talked about. I remember being at the TSC and teaching about the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man. And I think it's also pr probably also on, available on YouTube. But you've got to begin to do a study of things like what is effective prayer? What does the Bible say? So fervent, you understand. Fervent means that you have to be persistent and very, very consistent. Okay. Then, and, and fervent also means, you know, passion. When you pray, you're praying with passion, okay? Then the, the, the effective prayer, meaning there's a way to pray effectively and there's a way to pray ineffectively. You know, so I've had people bind cars. I've had people claim other people's cars. I've, I've had people, you know, all sorts of things anyway. Um, but just not so as not to lose the, the focus of today's preaching, which is about that Satan is a, a senior lawyer. And remember, where does he operate? To become a lawyer, by the way, and, and really I think the word would even be advocate. Let me use advocate. Eh? Because um, when, uh, you, when, when you finish your, your law studies, um, which is normally four years in Kenya, you become a lawyer. Okay, So in that case, you're a lawyer. But you are not yet an advocate of the high court. So to become an advocate of the high court, you have to go to KSL, Kenya School of Law, which I hear is drama. But, uh, you know, to tatobua, to kifika uko anyway, we are not afraid. But um, uh, so, so you have to go to KSL. So you go to KSL, I think, for about eight months to one year. And basically what you're doing is you're doing various courses. Then that you get, um, you do exams and you get certified to become an advocate of the high court. And so at that point, and remember when you become a lawyer, you actually graduate, okay? So you graduate with a deg degree in law, all right? So your family members come, they say you're a lawyer and everything, but you can't, there are things you can't do. For example, you can't sign documents as, 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 as a lawyer in terms of you have to be an advocate of the high court and a number of other things. But, you know, like for example, you cannot go to court, you know, to represent 
represent somebody. You could give advice, but you can't go to court. You can't sign things like affidavit. So you can't. There, there, there are things you cannot do based on the fact that you know you do have to get a practicing uh, license and practicing certificate and and be admitted as an advocate of the high court. So let's even say not even call Satan a senior lawyer. We can we should call him the right position would be to call him. He's an advocate. Okay. So so he's an advocate, but he's not an advocate from a position of so so I guess people say the devil's advocate makes some sense there so he's he's you know so so there are people who will be the devil's advocate from a position of um, and sometimes it's you and I unfortunately so let me let me let me take you back to my room so I'm in my room I have this 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 episode let me call it an episode and then I feel really bad about it but I don't do anything about it at that moment and then I feel the Holy Spirit grieved, but I still don't really do anything at that moment because I'm feeling very, very entitled at that moment. Um, I have been wronged according to me. So then what I do um, is that God opens my eyes. And, and these last few days has been God opening my, my spiritual eyes in such a way that really spooks me and scares me, you know, in a sense. But um, it's working in terms of, I think, it's the ones of you want to see, see, see. So God opened my eyes. And on one side of my room, that this day by day, I didn't see the angels, so I could tell they were there. They're always there anyway. But on this day, the Lord allowed me to only see the demons. And normally, you know, I always know that uh, there will always be like a demon or, or two demons um, that will be around a child of God. And if you haven't listened to the message about um, the books of heaven, you, you really need to listen to the message on the books of heaven. So that explains a little bit more about that. But I see many demons. And they're in a corner. They are not. They are far. They are, they're not coming near me. But they are having a conversation. But they are also laughing their heads off. Yeah. And then they look at me and they laugh and 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 they can't see that I can see them. Um, but basically, they are laughing because they have achieved something, or so they think. But God is very very faithful because I mean God God did work things out and and has helped me to just I'm processing all that and and, and the whole thing. But just to let you know that. There's no time you're alone, okay? So as a child of God, you really need to learn to get that um, uh, into your head that you're never alone. And just because our God is invisible, and just because the spirit realm is invisible, doesn't mean it, it doesn't exist. And, and so when, when, you know, even when you're on your phone, the sites that you go to on your phone, the, the, um, and then maybe you think you can delete them, the, the, the texting that you're doing on the phone, the phone calls you're having, and, and thinking that you're maybe being smart and, and deleting them, and, 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 and thinking that, you know, you're an excellent cheetah cock, let me call it that way. Um, and by the way, on this note, you know, the last thing I read last night and, and I was telling my husband, I kept repeating is Solomon had 700 wives and 300 concubines. So I repeated again, honey, Solomon had 700 wives and 300 concubines, 1,000 women. What was he doing with them, you know? Because even if he goes with shifts, I mean, what was he doing with them? So speaking of that and, and sexual sin, and those women did um, lead Solomon astray. And, and, and the way Solomon's story goes does not actually sound like he finished well, you know? Um, though, of course, we never know about somebody at their point of death. But, you know, um, but so I'm, I'm studying on that right now. That's, that's why I'm, I'm in First Kings. That's, that's, that's a book that I'm currently studying. And... Um, for some reason that just jumped out of the screens for me and and so that, that that again you may think you're an excellent player you may think you're excellent at 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 at, at deceiving your spouse or, or or playing your girlfriend or whatever it is but it's key to note that you're never alone you're never alone so jesus said i'll never leave you nor forsake you so jesus his presence is always there you know and um from time to time he's opened my eyes to see his presence you know but even when i don't see his presence it doesn't mean he's not there the same way that you know um when when you fuel your car you never go out to check fuel you know you, you never get to see the actual fuel that is being put in your car you never insist that you want to see it and all that but just based on the gauge that you're seeing and based on um you know you pay and then after that you actually turn on your engine and uh, well i guess you turn on your engine first and then you can see that the level of, of fuel has gone up um, but even if your gauge fuel gauge doesn't work you will pay 
why by faith okay so in the same way we've got to get to a place as children of god and for me it was it's it's been it was something that i deliberately had to keep telling myself every single day that's how i learn i repeat every single day to myself and ask the holy spirit to remind me to repeat it every day to myself i'm never alone i'm never alone so for me it was more of comfort but at some point it became also a thing of kathy just know you're never alone so we don't have the luxury even before we are born again to be alone so we are never alone there's always um you know uh, uh uh you're always being observed by the spirit realm so whether it is demons so that they can run right and write on the, the the book of accusation so that then you can be accused um because because remember and, and as i was praying over this message as the lord gave it to me the lord told me emphasize to my children that not only is Satan a senior advocate or senior lawyer, but he never brings useless evidence. Um, I've been studying evidence uh, in terms of uh, part of uh, the, 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 the one of the units that I have uh, this this term um, that was interrupted, and and I'm really struggling with it. But I think I'm struggling with it because Satan does not want me to understand it. Um, so I, I I need to put in more work into it. But so far, one of the things I'm, I'm understanding about evidence is um, there is evidence that is admissible and then there's evidence that is not admissible. So not all evidence is admissible in terms of courtrooms, okay? And, and so as I was praying about it, the Lord was telling me about evidence and, and, and was just using that to teach me and saying to me, there's evidence that is admissible and there's evidence that is not admissible. So I asked him, Father, what are the differences in the courtrooms of heaven between what because because i know that the courtrooms of heaven don't necessarily operate like our courtrooms here in, in in our nation although by the way one of the things god has taught me so much and even doing uh, my law degree has taught me is about um that just by by the way let me tell you my first week in law school i was like and you know i i, I kind of did wonder what the lecturer must have thought but i was like why because it was like bible you know it was it was like they were just talking from the bible you know it was bible and and so i understood why the lord sent me to law school and and, and told me you need to go to law school so one of the reasons i mean was just that and and and, and as I, i'm doing this degree a lot makes sense a lot makes sense and, and it makes me uh, more careful with the spirit realm it's not a joke guys it's not a joke but then, you know, yesterday, um, I was just saying how, ah, you know, me, uh, these masks, Germany, you know, kind of thing. Eh? But do you know yesterday someone forwarded a video to me of this guy who they're like two people who look like they're, they're from the chief's, um, definitely they're from the chief's uh, camp. But he didn't say where he was from, but he did a video. And but then if you find yourself in trouble like that, like you're being um, uh, victimized, or oppressed by 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 government servants a video is a very helpful thing you know obviously it's a risk because you could they could like kill you but they don't know whether you're live so if if you can do a live that is better because then other people see what is going on but make sure that you are on the right okay so it shouldn't be like that thing that that chick was doing where she was to canine the officer and saying you can't get into my car they have a right to get into your car by the way yeah? so learn the law don't don't talk uh, macho when you haven't even learned the law but also even if you know the law you've got to be able to respect people like police officers are not people that you 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 insult and disrespect okay remember they are human beings but also at the end of the day a police officer actually is mandated by the government to be able to let go of an issue and settle it that way so let you off with a warning on some issues obviously i mean it can be that they found you've murdered and they say oh don't kill again no but then on some things like if they find you without a mask they can tell you wapi mask you know and that's what ideally they're supposed to do ask you wapi mask in a nice way ideally and then tell you that put it on and and tell you if you do not put it on we will arrest you kind of thing you know but uh, so so there were these um uh, uh, uh people from from the like chief askaris on the video and i'm unable to upload this video but it's a very sad video and um the guy's in his house which is like you know it, the, the house is like the house is like you know it's in his bedroom really but you can see outside so i'm not sure how what the setup of the the home is you can hear a baby crying you can um you know and all that and his bed is not made and he says wame kuja kuni gongea mlango wana sema that uh, i'm not wearing a mask the sad thing is that those 
those Askaris were also not wearing a mask. So that's one of the things I wouldn't mind, you know, and, and, and when I'm an advocate of the high court, those are the kind of things for me I would be picking to say my client, you know, and <laughs> basically, you know, so it's part of the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm going to, to law school, especially for the poor. They need representation. They need somebody to be an ambulance chaser in such a case, but not for the sake of getting money, but for the sake of ensuring that there is law and order. So, um, but he was being arrested in his bedroom and he kept repeating that I'm being told that I'm being arrested together with my family for not wearing a mask in my house. So I don't know what grudges were going on, but the interesting thing is that the, the Askaris did not correct it. Normally, if an Askari is not, is, is not doing something, if it's a lie or something like that, then they would normally, especially if you're doing a video, they'll probably put it on record and say, Apana, you know, or whatever it is. But anyway, you never know, because also the other thing is that um, it, it, there's a lot of panic things going around and all that so one of the things that um uh you know also i looked at and, and so and thought maybe that's why i'm not allowed to it's like just not agreeing to post on on my page was also yeah could be you know that the guy was reported by somebody that maybe he's infected or something and then now you know they're being picked up to be going be quarantined but i really felt sorry for that family all the same whatever the situation is so but um why have i brought that up again things to do with accusations, things to do with evidence, and all those things. So like a video like that would be evidence eh, that can be used if he's trying to argue something out, but then they would need, the police would need to be able to have other evidence, like maybe a witness who has reported the person and said that they are not whatever. But if they had reported them, maybe to MOH, I guess maybe they reported them to the chief, whatever the case, my prayer is that they are not victimizing that guy. That's, that's my prayer, that it's not an oppression situation and it's not a victimization situation. But I felt sorry for that family because I wondered who's going to help them. And um, if you are in uh, media, that is that would be a story worth following. And I think I'll also try and check w on one of my media family um, and, and just see whether it's a story that they would follow up. Because I think there's a story there. There's definitely a story there. And well done on how you guys managed to get out that uh, musician guy um, who was done to crazy things. You know, for those of you who don't know, you know, uh, the guy is, uh, says he was going to get medication for his wife. Notice I said the guy says, you know, as, as, as lawyers we normally say, it is alleged, okay? So that he was going to get medicine for his wife, got caught up in curfew. He had the medicine in the car. The cops did get to see the medicine in the car. And, you know, he was um, charged uh, cash bail. And then uh, the wife came and paid cash bail, I think, um, uh, 10, 000, no, 5,000 or something like that. And then he was told now for the breakdown fees, you need to go and get the breakdown guys. So he went to the breakdown guys. It's, you remember that story? You guys know that story. So again, just what I'm trying to set up for you is, is, is like a courtroom and legal system kind of how, how it works. Eh? So by the time uh, a prosecutor takes a court before a judge and before a courtroom, they have to make sure they have an airtight case. And Lucifer has, you know, he, 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 he worked under God, you know, God created him anyway. But he worked under God and he is under God, you know, at the, at the bottom line, because all things were created by God, for, uh, by him, for him, and, and through him, okay? And, and in the end, in Romans chapter 20, and that's the good news, Romans, uh, Revelation, sorry, Revelation chapter 20 tells us about how Lucifer will be chained, you know, although he'll be chained for a short time, and by then he'll just be chained by an angel, not, not, not by an archangel or anything, he'll just be chained by an angel, eh? one angel by the way not many yeah and then after some time he shall be released and then of course later on uh, the judgment shall come and then him together with the demons shall be thro thrown into the fire there's nothing you can do about that there's nothing anyone can do about that that is already a decision that has already been made um, and, and that case cannot be amended um, I have shared before that one of the things that happened to me well, as I got into deep intercession and became a pastor also and began to move a lot in the spirit realm, I began to feel sorry for the devil. I began to feel sorry for Satan. And it was as part of, you know, trying to get souls for the kingdom. And I, I would find myself like trying to negotiate with God for Satan until the Lord told me that is deception. And you see what Satan does? If he can get you to a place where you feel we're here for him or you're trying to negotiate for him, what he does is that it's, you know, if you pray for someone or if you try to negotiate for someone, what you're doing, first of all, it's unbiblical. Let's start there. It's, you can't do that, okay? Uh, but also, the other thing is that you will begin to sympathize with them. So if you pray for somebody, if you're making a case for somebody, you begin to sympathize with them. Satan 
and his demons are the one thing we are allowed to hate, okay? So you're not allowed to hate somebody, you're not allowed to hate another person. You can hate um, maybe uh, uh, an institution, you know, but hate is also not a healthy thing. But you've got to hate Lucifer. You've got to hate Lucifer, you've got to hate his demons, and that's the only way you find yourself getting to the place where you actually hate sin. But you can only do that when you then understand. When you then understand. I remember Smith Wigglesworth, who I always quote quite a bit, um, used to punch people. So if you tell him that you have a problem with your eye, I guess he'd box your eye, boom, but he would punch people most of the time, like in the stomach. But he used to punch the place that the, you'd tell him that you have um, a condition on. Um, but no one ever sued him because um, everybody he punched was healed. <laughs> so, and when he was asked why he was, uh, he punches people, he looked very confused and said, I'm punching, I'm not punching them. I'm punching the devil out of them, you know, so God's generals and, and those kind of things. So just basically, um, just going back again to, to Lucifer as a, as a senior um, counsel, as a senior um, advocate um, uh, of the court. Uh, he, he does not represent God, okay, so that's the difference. Because normally, um, uh, and let me put it, an agent, you know, normally when you're an advocate of, of, of the high court, you are an agent of the court. And if you're an agent of the court, then it gives you a right to speak in the court, okay? So you can speak in the court, you can operate in the court, you can transact in the court and do things based on in the court because then the, the, the high court, uh, and it's not by the way, you know, the Supreme Court or whatever it says, the advocate of the high court of Kenya. So it, it recognizes you as somebody who is authorized in matters of law to be able to defend or speak on behalf of. So Satan, does, he, he obviously will defend um, his, his emissaries. He will defend those who work for him. He will defend them before he, he damages them or destroys them and all those things. But um, he understands um, the, the laws of God which is all here, okay? These are the laws of God. But then God doesn't have laws that are outside of here. These are the laws of God, okay? And that's why it's important to know it. This is God's constitution. So like the way we all must understand the constitution of Kenya, um, this is the constitution. This is, and that's why we must also read the word of God so that you can understand things. What does it say? What are the, the laws? What are the laws of operation and all that? So Satan understands the word of God. And that's why in, when you look at when, when, when Jesus, um, you know, wa was moved away into the desert um, uh, and, and, you know, he went through those tests, he was using the word of God. So it was about the constitution. So this was a courtroom of heaven engagement, actually. Yeah, uh, as, 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 as Satan is saying, it is written. So he's trying to tempt Jesus. So basically putting a trap on him. And tomorrow I'm preaching about traps. The message for tomorrow is traps and more traps. Okay, very, very powerful message uh, as well. Um, so Satan... The way Satan works, and I'm getting so excited as much as I may not be showing on the outside, the way Satan works is that he will tempt you, okay? So you need to know he will tempt you. So he'll either tempt you or he will deceive you, okay? And I remember I preached um, a message which is also on YouTube about, um, what was it called, Father? What was it called? What was it called? Oh, Lord. I first preached this message in Sichirai uh, in Kakamega. Um, anyway, I'm not remembering what it's called, but I preached a message about how Satan works, and, and some of you may remember that message, so you can probably comment about it. Um, also, Kathambi is telling me it's an officer of the court, an officer of the court, I like that. So um, Kathambi is actually an advocate, so she's helping me out on this. It's nice to see you, Kathambi. You're going to help me out on this today. We're going to be preaching together. Um, so Cecilia is saying Lucifer is also a staff uh, in the courts of heaven, and he understands the protocols of heaven. Okay, so she's just commenting on that. But basically, um, you need to understand, he, he, Satan walks in the corridors of the courtrooms of heaven. So, he has access. The Bible only, not only says he has access, but it tells us that he accuses us day and night. Imagine, accuses us day and night. He accuses the brethren, and by the way, specifically, he doesn't go to those courtrooms of heaven um, to accuse unbelievers. He goes to accuse believers. So can you imagine? Yani it's a full-time job for him. You know, he's, he's high in business and all that. 
and and and, and so he's, he goes to those courtrooms and everything and and um you know uh, so, so Satan will tempt, yes. And, and thank you, uh, Elida, for saying that. Satan tempts. God does not tempt, okay? God does not tempt. So one of the things sometimes we are deceived into is that God tempts. God, why are you tempting me? Uh -uh. Yeah? So the Bible uh, it does talk about the, sin, the, 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 the Lord's Prayer when Jesus was asked to teach us how to pray. And then he said, uh, you know, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, okay? So, in terms of leading, yeah? so, so, so the Lord lead, leading in terms of, you know, because the Bible talks about he leads us in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He's addressing God. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us um, from evil, all right? So, would God lead you into temptation? Not really, but it's important to say that terminology and you know when you use you use the, 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 the Lord's Prayer and it's it's something that you use in terms of to help you to understand how to to to, to teach uh, to, to how to pray. It's a skeleton of, of leading on how to pray, okay? Uh, and um, um, so 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 you're saying lead us not into temptation, but not you're not you're not telling God to about tempting and the Bible is very clearly says and states God does not tempt us. So it is really wrong to say that God tempts us. And even when Job was talking about, you know, that God is doing all these things to him, uh, he was wrong. His, his, his eschatology was wrong, you know. His understanding of word in that case was wrong. And maybe in the Old Testament they did think that God tempted them. But Job did not understand that it was, it was Satan who was doing it. But that is deeper. How is it deeper that Job thought God was the one who was doing these things to him. And yet he said, even though you slay me, yet will I still follow. Job still goes on and say, I know my Redeemer lives. And Job stands blameless and God redeems. And today God was telling me also, I was really praying for a number of you who are going through a difficult time. And God told me as I minister, I must remember to minister to some of you who are going through a difficult time. Because some of you are going through difficult situations. Some of you are going through a, a valley of the shadow of death. Some of you are dealing with very hard situations. And so sometimes I guess when I preach, I preach a lot from a position of victory and, 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 and I, I hope it still encourages you. But today I have really been led to talk to people who are going through difficult times and difficult things. And yes, we will have difficult times. There will be seasons when you actually want to die, you know, and, and it's not good to want to die, by the way, because we're not supposed to be suicidal. It's one of the things that Satan can accuse you of. But as Christians, the Bible says in this world will have trouble. I've had my share fear of trouble. I've had my difficulties. You know, in the last about four or five days, it's been a very, very difficult time. I know it's not going to last because the Lord is very, very clear to me. It's not going to last. But I've had seasons in my life. I've shared about seasons in my life when I have I've cried to God over something and it's, it's something that I've wept to God for and had a difficult situation, you know, whether it's for months, whether it's for years, and it just doesn't look like it's lifting. And part of what we must do in that situation is to be aware of where is this trial coming from and also to be able to understand that God has his purposes in allowing trials to come because trials then are a process, you know, that, that, that if somebody could help me post this scripture that I never get the order of what it says, but uh, it, it, it comes so that we can be tried and, and, and right after it has been tried, you know, we've been tried, it brings faith and, and you know, after it's finished, da, 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 you know the scripture I'm trying to talk about, my, my ministry partner's assistance, please try and post for me that so that then I can, I can also just share it and then I see it, I'll tell you that it is the right one but the one that says that um uh uh what is it called oh i think it's trials it talks about trials or difficulties eh? uh, how they come and why they come so some of you are going through that and it is part of growth it is part of growth i i don't understand why uh, God does not choose the mountaintop. The mountaintop is a place of victory. It's a place of woohoo, the place you're feeling good. I don't know why he doesn't use mountaintops to grow us per se, but uses more of the valleys to grow us. And the times I've grown in my faith with God has been the times when I have actually gone through difficult times. Situations that don't seem to be shifting, um, you know, whether it is uh, a workplace situation, whether it's a marriage situation, whether it's a friend situation, whether it's a family other situation, whether it's a, 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 a even a sickness situation or whatever it is, or, or it's the sickness of a loved one or whatever it is, or, or whether it is money trouble and all those kind of troubles that we know we have in our lives. Uh, oh my goodness. All right. Okay. Sour. Could you, Mine, Mine thank you for, for quoting it. Uh, I think it's actually the one, but if you could just quote the scripture too, so that then very quickly, I just quickly go in there and, and just look at it so that then I'm not trying to turn the scripture pages and, and checking what it says. Normally that's, that's what we request. 
Um, so I've got Abdi Razak talking about Islam is the truth. No, you're lying. Uh, Islam is not the truth. But uh, hang around. Uh, so that then you can understand what you're teaching right now and and hearing uh, but uh, you guys can see you know how he's actually come to a page like this to talk about islam is the truth when was the last time you were in a muslim on a muslim page saying jesus christ is the only way the truth and the life it's something i actually do um but uh abdul razak if your english is good enough it looks like it's good enough i would encourage you to say to god uh, show me the truth show me the truth just say that show me the truth and even if you want to say allah show me the truth you know but you're referring to god um ask him to show you the truth but i know that your faith um uh, your faith, uh, your Islamic faith requires you to respect other people's faith. So I'd also encourage you to respect our faith, but you're not really being disrespectful, but respect our faith, okay? Um, I think uh, there's something about, is it Surah Kafir that requi requires you to respect other people's faith? So please respect our faith. And thank you for logging in. Uh, but you're wrong. Jesus Christ is the only way, the truth and the life. No one goes to God except through the Father. But I'm not going to deviate and, and thank you for, for logging in. Um, so uh, Ooh, uh, so, so, so Lucifer being a senior counsel prepares his case, okay? And how does he prepare his case? He, he's not omnipresent, thank you Jesus. Um, omnipresent means for those maybe who may be watching and you don't understand, omnipresent means present everywhere. God is present everywhere, okay? And, and he's omnipresent and he's omnipotent, okay? So omnipresent being present everywhere, omnipotent means uh, he's able, he's all able. There's nothing that God cannot do. God's greatness is not limited uh, and there's nothing that is impossible with God. All right, I was really looking forward to that scripture. Um, all right, thank you, Mine. Uh, so let me just use this. So consider it nothing. Uh, but joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you fall into various trials, uh, be assured that the testing of your faith through experience produces endurance, leading to spiritual maturity and inner peace. And let endurance have its perfect result and uh, do a thorough work so that then you may be perfect and completely developed in your faith, lacking in nothing. Yeah, so that's the amplified version. Uh, I think if I can get another version, that would be great as well. Uh, but uh, I like that in terms of the amplified version. But um, there's a version that talks about different, like, different kinds of things. One of the things you note here is that as a result of trial, in fact, you're supposed to count it joy. I like that. That's why I really wanted it to be broke because I, 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 I was remember there was something I was not remembering right now. But count it joy. Count it joy, you know. So when we are tried, our attitude is supposed to be one of joy. Okay? Imagine. Imagine I'm not there yet. Uh, we're still working on it. Once in a while, I, I do get there. But uh, it, it's interesting because I have not counted the joy the last few days, but count it joy. Yeah, this is the version I was looking for. Thank you so much, Edwin and Mine. Thank you so much and my love to your family as well. That's one of my dear friends and sisters. Um, my brothers, count it all joy when you fall into different types of temptations, knowing that the trying of your faith works patience. Uh, but let patience have its perfect work so that then you may be perfected and entire an, an entire lacking nothing hmm. which version is it i'm looking for that says when uh, when patience has done its work it results in what it, it kind of has like a sequence eh? but really only through being tried do we develop the fruit of the spirit which is patience imagine it's through trial it's through trial, you know, and then we learn endurance. Another version talks about endurance. And part of the problem with a lot of Christians is that they don't have staying power. What is staying power? As, as, as let me call myself an athlete, give myself that name athlete, um, but as someone who likes to run, one of the reasons why running and hiking are the sports I really, really love is because of the staying power. I find that it trains me. Uh, so I, I beat up my body physically by, by doing my runs, by doing um, jogging, and I'll, I'll do pretty long ones sometimes. I mean, when I'm, I'm doing well in terms of my, my fitness level, I'll normally do 21 kilometers. That's normally my target, to do 21 kilometers at least three to four times in a week, you know. So I run long distance. Not, not fast, but I run long distance. And part of what it does is that you really, really feel, you actually re literally feel like you're going to die, you know. Especially the first, like, 10 minutes are the hardest. And then if you break from that, then you just maintain running. Part of what happens is you, that you break into something called bradycardia, 
I've just restarted my runs and I've not reached there. And I preached about bradycardia. And there's a spiritual bradycardia because if you endure, then part of what happens is that you become so strengthened by God. And, and so, because God will strengthen you and he will send his angels to, to strengthen you. And the Bible is very, very clear that you shall never be tried beyond what you can bear, okay? No temptation has found you beyond what you can bear. But when you're tried, if someone could post that scripture for me as well. But when you're tried, God will always, you will not be tried beyond what you can bear. And when you're tried, that God will provide a way out. Eh? So always know that. And, and it's always important to know that. And God was speaking to me about that this morning. Um, so let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so Jessica Gomez, uh, let's see. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, but let patience have its perfect work, uh, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Uh, there's another scripture. There's another scripture that, that, that talks about, uh, and, and, and patience does this, and this does this, and this does this. There's another scripture that talks about, it gives some, there we go. There we go. It's Romans chapter 5. Yeah. Romans chapter 5, verse 3 and 4. Thank you so much, Beth. That's the scripture I was also looking for. There's the counted joy. I think God really wanted me to see that counted joy, but there's this. So, and not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation pro pro produces perseverance and perseverance, character and character hope. That's what I was looking for. So you can see the steps. And, and you, you won't get those things, you know. And a lot of you, you know, and I'm glad you stopped saying I tap into that. The, the, the how I am today and who I am today is as a result of the things I've gone through. And once I began to understand that I stopped regretting, it still hurts in some ways. God is still healing me. And I look forward to videos that I will do that, you know, there'll be no heart showing. But right now you guys are joining me in seeing my healing journey and my transition journey and my growth journey. But that's it. So, so, so you know, um, uh, let me find it again. Let me just go back again. So, and not only that, uh, yes, uh, oh, whee. okay, what has just happened? So, yeah, and not only that, but we also glory in tribulation, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance and perseverance. So, as a result of tribulation, you will have perseverance, okay? So, someone will be telling you, hey, no, unakwanga, unakwanga hard, unakwanga strong. It's through tribulation that you develop perseverance. So, you don't quit. And you don't say, ah, me, I'm not even going to go to church. I'm too discouraged and all that. So it's only through tribulation that God, let me not say only because that may not be biblically sound, but it's through tribulation that, tribulation is one of the ways that God teaches us uh, perseverance. And then, um, uh, do, 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 do. No, then tribulation is the one, uh, tribulation produces perseverance and perseverance is the one that produces character. Okay, so you've got to understand how the Bible goes. So this is part of my teaching on how to study your Bible. Yeah, so it is uh, when you want to develop to be, to persevere, then you will also be rejoicing in tribulation because when tribulation comes, you'll be saying, "Oh God, you've decided to allow me to learn to persevere. Thank you. I embrace it and I count it joy." Okay, and then um, when 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 the perseverance is on and it's really really tough and everything, and you're asking God to strengthen you, then you're saying, "Oh God." Uh, thank you that you're helping me to persevere because then I'm developing character. Oh, look at my character. And by then I, I talk to myself like that to encourage myself. I say, oh my goodness, I'm developing some stretch marks. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, stretch marks of growth, stretch marks of character because of this perseverance that I'm going through. And then as a result of the character, then, so character then is one that is, produces hope. Okay. And remember uh, faith, hope, and love. Okay. The, the three uh, greatest of graces that we were reading about last night. I think how the Bible works and then it's so intertwined, isn't it? It's intertwined and that's why you must read scripture in whole and, and, and learn to cross-reference your scriptures. And normally you'll find that there's something in this area and then you'll find it again in another area including the Old Testament and then when you bring it together then you're able to understand that's why God says this and then says this and then says this and then says this, okay? So, Back to the issue of, of Lucifer being a senior counsel and, and being an advocate um, and, and, and being an, one of the officers in terms of in, of in the courts, yeah? And that's why even when he went before God, you know, when the sons of men were coming in chapter 1 and in chapter 2, the sons of God were coming, who are the angels of God, were coming before God, it says, and Lucifer also came with them. So he was asked by God, you know, what have you seen? What was he coming? He was coming to bring an accusation. Okay. And God knew that it was about Job and or it was to accuse the earth. Because part of what Satan does, Satan 
is always working together with his agents, but also with, with people who have agreed or been deceived. Let me put as, as people who have been deceived. Oh, Shakaira, Kanda, Sitara, Siri. You know, people who have been deceived into, into believing that Lucifer is God and that God is unfair or whatever it is, eh? that deception. So once they've been deceived into that, they, they, they become, because Satan does not have enough demons. So he needs people, okay? He needs people. But unfortunately, because of the free will that God has given us, some people choose to serve him. But the hardest thing, and that's why you really, really need to get that book um, of Rick Joyner, you know, uh, The Final Quest, is it, it will wake you up, is that he also uses uh, believers. Because some believers will give themselves up to, um, to, 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 to Lucifer. And how do they give themselves up to Lucifer? They give themselves up to Lucifer by, um, you know, by ensuring that, uh, you know, things like cooperating with him, like when you gossip, okay? Let me tell you what gossip does. And I've actually preached on gossip and you need to find it on YouTube. It's a very serious issue. When you gossip as a child of God, eh? as a child of God when you gossip, good morning. When you gossip as a child of God, um, what happens is, Satan loves that kind of gossip because as a child of God, you have just accused your brother. But at the same time, you have hated. And remember, he who hates his brother is a murderer. Because gossip is the root. When, when, oh, when we're doing deliverance and, you know, we, are, we have a deliverance class that is soon coming and it will be good if you registered and if you can just check the flyer so that they can know and get the details of that. We teach about doors. And when we teach about the different doors that Satan uses to, 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 to influence your life and to basically torment you and oppress you, one of the doors that, that Satan uses is the door of hatred. And under the door of hatred, you will find that one of the characteristics for you to know that the door of hatred is open in your life is that you gossip. Okay? So gossip is not a, 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 a very light sin. It's, it's one of those sins that is very very heavy and the problem with gossip is that it's not about gossip at all but it's about hatred okay so when you gossip it is murder okay because what you've done is that you have actually sentenced because remember by the way guys um we the bible says oh yeah the glory of god the bible says that um the 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 the, the righteous man if someone could bring up that scripture for me and help me bring up that scripture the righteous man uh, the, 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 the righteous man judges all things, but he himself is not subject to, the, to, 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 to mere judgment of men, something like that, if you could find that for me, but saying that the, the righteous man judges all things. If you just look for that, you'll find it and it can pop up and we can use it. Eh? Um, thank you so much, Faith, and I think uh, Edwin also have brought up the scripture I'd asked for, First Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13, that the temptations in your life are no different from what others experience, and God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than uh, you can stand. When you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that then you can endure, okay? So, so God will never allow you to be tempted beyond what you can bear, and thank you so much, brethren, uh, brother Edwin and uh, sister uh, Faith for, 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 for posting that and helping me out with that so someone else be finding the other one so that then we can continue on that but uh, we've got to trust god we've got to trust god so let me tell you what happened as i woke up today so i was talking about sorry let me finish about the gossip the gossip so the so so how if i gossip about somebody and and i say something about somebody um then what happens is that if it is a gossip situation then uh and how you know gossip is my dear faithful clock, okay? How you know about that you're gossiping is when you say something that changes how the person you're telling, how the hearer views the other person. That's a simple definition of gossip, yeah? All right, for those of you who don't know, that clock has, has a deep meaning for me in my life. Uh, and it was part of my healing process. So I, 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 even when it chimes for me, it says something to me. So Lydia, Lydia Minor, thank you so much for that. Um, uh, and I think Edwin, Ed, Edwin Dongo now here, and they're both sharing about First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 15. Eh? The spiritual man judges all things, but he himself is not subject to any, an, anyone's judgment. So all those people of do not judge. 
Are you seeing? We judge all things. We judge all things. Eh? But you know, do not judge refers to like now when you condemn somebody from by saying this person is a sinner, this person is a whatever. You know, when you're judging, judge the sin, not the person. Judge the sin, not the person. That's the difference. Yeah. So, but he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged by no one. That is First Corinthians chapter two and verse fifteen. But again, don't take it literally in such a way that you think that now you know you can you, nobody can judge you at all and and all that because we we have um, we have to be accountable to one another. Yeah. Remember, we have to be accountable to one another. All right. So um, and remember, the Bible even says, "Do you not know you shall judge angels?" So. Um, if I talk about somebody to someone and it reflects negatively on them, and for me this is a work in progress. I, I, I'm not what I, where I used to be on this, but I'm not where I'm supposed to be on this. And my prayer has continued to be, and when you pray for me, please pray with me that my, I would be the way Jesus was with Judas. Because Jesus did not tell anybody that Judas is the one who was going to betray them. That's, that's what I aspire to. And I pray to, to God that I would be at, that I would never tell someone. I would not confide in my husband about so and so on this and this. Anything that I say that then changes the perception, how the person views, how the person views that other person. So that's gossip. Okay. If I say something that makes you change how you see somebody, then I'm gossiping. Okay, so and, and may the Lord help us in terms of, of, of that in itself, because it's something that, that Satan uses a lot in our lives as children of God. And remember, gossip comes from offense. A lot of times gossip comes from offense, but uh, the root cause of it is actually hatred. So if I gossip, Lucifer, who is a senior counsel, and a senior counsel is, is, is a very thorough person. Senior counsels don't do Ujinga, they've got years of experience and for Satan's sake, his, Satan's case rather, he's, he's had uh, thousands, could be millions of years, uh, we, you know, we don't know, you know, when, at what point he was thrown from heaven, um, could be millions of years of experience in being a senior counsel, okay? So, um, he understands, he's studied men, he's studied things, he understands things like precedents and things like those. He's seen how God moves, he's understood how God moves and things like those. He, he knows the Bible in and out, you know, very well. I keep wondering whether he was like created with the word of God inside of him, the same way that the other angels are. I suspect that's the case, you know, because I don't think that they sit and they memorize it. But I think that when God created them, he, he put the word of God in them because it looks like Satan from what may have dealt with him uh, and when I've, 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 I've had, you know, encounters with him, Lucifer seems to, 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 to know the Bible completely, you know, but he uses it also to trick. But he does not take a mediocre case before God. Okay, that's what you guys need to know. He, 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 he can try to lie, but normally he will find something in the Bible to accuse you of. So one of the things he will do is, if you gossip about uh, somebody, he will take that accusation, he will take it before the courtrooms of heaven. It has of course been written in the book of accusation because everything he records in the book of accusation, it's probably been picked up by a demon, maybe not him because he cannot be everywhere at the same time. And then it's taken to the courtrooms of heaven. He's the one who goes, okay? So he's the, he's the prosecutor in terms of the kingdom of darkness, you know? Yeah, and, and he works as a prosecutor because God never prosecutes us, okay? So let's just say he's the prosecutor, all right? So he goes as a prosecutor to go and present the case. He obviously has to have his evidence, so he prepares. Please note that a lot of times, one of the things I've learned in law school is, I used to think, and like a lot of us, you know, we always think that when a case is blown up, comes in, in front of uh, the press, and they've done a great job, and it never goes to court, we always say, they bribed somebody. No, it's not that they bribed somebody. The cops, and, and Kenyan cops in particular, have had a big problem with collecting their evidence. There is a way that evidence is collected that can make the evidence right and can dis or can disqualify the evidence. There is a way, so there are laws. Imagine there's actually, there's actually, um, uh, what is it called? Uh, there's an evidence act, okay? In Kenya, there's an evidence act. There are things like criminal procedures act and things like those. So they will talk about evidence. Because remember, to be able to, 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 to deal with any case, whether it's a civil case or whether it's a criminal case, you need to have your evidence, okay, to, to prove something, all right? So, so, and then there's evidence that is admissible, like I said before, and then there's evidence that is not admissible. So Satan will collect your words. 
Because remember also your words. If you read, if you if you go to the video that I, I did about the oh yeah yeah okay, Tara said as in I'm, I'm even for me I'm realizing this as I'm talking. Eh? The open heavens, uh, uh, not open heavens, but the, the 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 books, the books of heaven. In that preaching, the Lord was revealing that um, there's always an angel who sits with us. And the work of the angel is to record everything. And the angel records everything we say. The angel records everything we do. And for me, the thing that really scared me was that the angel records everything we think. Because when I was preaching, and you'll see it in the video because I say it, I kind of had gotten to the tricky place where I was like, yeah, I think things are recorded when we say them. I think things are recorded when we do them. But to be honest, I thought that I could get away with thinking. So I'd gotten to a place in my life, and I believe that was Satan's part of Satan's deception, where I thought I will not uh, say something negative about somebody, I will not do something bad to somebody, but in my head, I have like a little movie, Rambo kind of movie that is engaging, and I've killed you, I've finished you, I've done everything. And then after that, I repent for let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart and one of my personality types is melancholy okay and and the problem with that personality type it's the personality type that is very sensitive to the voice of god it's the most sensitive uh, 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 personality type to the voice of god okay a lot of worshipers are melancholies prophets always have uh, uh, always have a melancholic side but uh and i probably do need to do a different study on this but the weakness of melancholies is that they get very offended and that they bear grudges and 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 on, on all those kind of things uh so yeah uh -huh. so there's an angel with us at any given time remember i was telling you earlier you're never alone so there's an angel who is um always with us at any given time and obviously there's the angel who also is supposed to just watch over us okay uh, because angels are always watching over us they actually even uphold us so that then our foot feet would not fall you know uh, if you read psalm 91 i mean that is so powerful that you could be about to trip and you don't trip and that's that those are angels who are upholding you so that then you will not fall but the falling is not just the physical falling it's also the spiritual falling in terms of falling into sin and falling away from the faith yeah so it's it's it's, it's twofold uh in that way so but there's an angel who their work is purely purely to just record everything that you say, everything that you do, and everything that you think. So what is that about? When that record goes up to heaven, because it's in the books of heaven, Satan also has at any given time has two demons. He doesn't have one. I guess he doesn't trust them. So he has two demons at any given time who... Um, record everything you say and everything you do okay so they they, they they can't read your thoughts thank god otherwise we would be finished you know but you need to know that in the courtrooms of heaven and the books that are, are opened the way the bible talks about in daniel uh please check for me somebody i don't know whether it's daniel chapter 3 verse 10 if you can check for me it says uh, and they sat down and the books were opened okay so uh, and it's what i was talking about the books of heaven and and, and please watch that video on the books on the books of heaven um which books are these that are opened the court sat and the books were opened which books are opened I talk about those books and I teach about those books. So you need to know that there are books and one of them is those things that record. What are the records showing about what you thought on that day, what you did on that day, and what you said on that day. And then, the, 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 of course, the other book that is opened is, is, is the book of accusation. Because Satan will present his book. Yeah? He will not stay in heaven, but he comes with it. And he will present it as his evidence. And he will come and he will show it. And it is written. And part of what he does with this is that he, he, you remember he's been around. So he's written things about your grandmother. He's written what your grandmother did. He's written things that your grandmother said. He, he's written things that your grandfather did. He's written things that your grandfather said. Basically, Satan has your entire family tree. Okay? Um, if there's no uh, 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 cleansing, blood cleansing, bloodline cleansing. Because there's got to be, and that's why things like bloodline cleansing and, and, and raising the family altar is so critical, okay? It's Daniel 7 verse 10. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Lydia Minor. Thank you so much. Um, 
this is Mama Abby. Thank you so much. Um, so a river of fire was flowing, coming out from before him. Uh, thousands upon thousands attended him. 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. The court was seated and the books were opened. Okay, so I preached on that. So thank you so much, Edwin, brother Edwin as well. You're really on fire. You're just being yani. Kama kuna tu stars na peana, today would be the one I'd be giving you stars, stars, stars. Thank you so much, brother Edwin. Let me see whether you put a different version. I like comparing my versions. But there I have so many Bibles. And part of what I do is that I compare my versions, but also when I do online. But don't depend on your online Bible because... A time is coming when they will change it, okay? So don't just depend on online Bible. A time is coming when they will change it. So be very, very careful. Who is they? They will change it. New world order. Uh, uh, so be very, very careful. Buy a Bible. A time is even coming when getting a Bible that, that has not been interfered with will we'll have whatever will we'll, we'll, we'll come. So, and Bibles will become rare at some point. Bibles will be banned. So as we, we keep moving along, I don't know whether it is going to be within our time. So make sure you do the old, good old physical uh, Bible that you get and just use your online to, to kind of help you back and forth. So Brother Edwin has shared a different version, I think. A stream of fire went out and um, a stream of fire went out uh, Okay, people are commenting, so things are jumping. So a stream of fire went out and came out from before him. A thousand thousands served him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were opened. Okay, so when, when, when the books are opened, Satan, Satan's book is one of the things it carries as key evidence is, is, is a book of accusation. Okay, but then he'll use other evidence. So that's why things like if your mom had an abortion and didn't tell you, it's, it's, it's going to cause you chaos. It's going to cause you chaos. It will cause her chaos, then it will cause you chaos. Why? Because Satan will be demanding blood. So you'll find your mom could have had an abortion and then you, who is a born again Christian, walking right with God, you love God so much, you keep miscarrying. And I've seen this. As a deliverance pastor, I've seen this. Where I've taught uh, someone and said, please go and investigate your bloodline. And then someone comes back to me and tells me, Oi, my auntie just informed me that my mom had an abortion. Or my mom was crying. Imagine, apostle, when we prayed together and said, or, or you know, when you prayed for me, this is what happened. My mom was crying with me in hospital because I just lost my fourth baby. You know, I'm not giving a particular case. This is a hypothetical case, but I've had a case. And, 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 and as, we're crying, as I was crying in hospital and, you know, she was crying for her grandchildren, she asked me, could this be because I had an abortion? And it helps. Mothers, it helps. If you're not going to deal with it yourself, then it helps if you know your daughter. And, and, and daughters also, tell your mom. Teach your mom these things. Share the videos. They might be like, oh, you know, whatever it is, but it clicks. Because then they say, you know, you find they open up and say it's because of this and that and the other, okay? So, oh, Lord Jesus, this is a heavy message. I, I, I don't even think I can finish it today. But, um, and normally when I say I can't finish it today, I never really come back to it. I guess you'd have to really open up on it a lot more. But I think how Satan accuses us. So your mom has an abortion, thinks it's past her. Uh, moves on completely. Maybe even your dad doesn't know about it. Maybe it was even before your dad or your dad could be involved. Um, and then they, they have all of you, nothing happens. And then this thing comes and visits upon you. And I know the Bible says that it shall not visit upon your children. But the Bible also says in Deuteronomy chapter 28, uh, in Deuteronomy, sorry, that about being cast to four generations. If someone could find that scripture for me about being cast to four generations, I have it on my phone available as part of my notes, but I just want to move swiftly. But it talks about being cast to four generations, you know, and this one in particular is about idolatry. But remember, idolatry can be serving yourself. Okay, serving yourself. And uh, the, the scripture that I shared today, this morning, um, in uh, I, Isaiah, oh, it's not here, it's not here, but um, it's Isaiah 42, verse 8. My glory I shall not yield to another. And um, let me just try and see if I can get it, uh, because this one I want to get quickly. Give me a sec, and not quickly in terms of you guys are not getting it quickly enough, but I just, I'm just really burning to read it out because I'd posted it earlier. Um, It's, it is Isaiah chapter 42 verse 8 and it's one of the scriptures that God gave me when he sent me out in terms of ministry. 
uh, they told me I share everything but I will not share my glory and uh, why am I not seeing it I thought I posted it uh, oh it's here yeah so I am the Lord that is my name I will not heal my glory to another or my praise to idols okay so you know like for example whenever um, you see something like today I saw something where someone had posted and children of God are terrible at setting you up like that eh? so um, I saw someone had posted uh, something saying that um, this this man of God um, prayed look what happened when this man of God prayed about coronavirus and on this day 39 people were healed because this man of God prayed over uh, prayed about coronavirus and people really insulted uh, that man of God and insulted people but when I saw it I read the name of uh, the the pastor or the of the prophet that they were talking about and I said, woi, 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 dangerous, dangerous, dangerous. For me, I always pray, nobody do this to me. Why? Because the moment it is posted that you prayed, and as a result, you prayed. You see, the thing with COVID-19, COVID I can't say that I prayed for COVID-19 victims, and today, 44 people were healed, and therefore, it was because of me praying. That is such a dumb thing. Why? Because there are so many people praying. It would be very foolish of me to think that it was just because of my prayer. You see, so what's happening is the, the glory of God is being yielded in such a case to that man. And every time you see that, whenever your congregation begins to exalt you, begins to magnify you, begins to lift you up instead of giving God the glory, it's the beginning of your end. Because there is only one thing that God doesn't share. God shares everything with us. In the Garden of Eden, he gave everything and said, it's only this tree you will not take. And so at this point, I can't help but wonder, was it then the tree of his glory? You know, could it be that that's what thought it was? But God does not he does not share his glory and it's not for his sake god is not having um some kind of um identity crisis um god is still god but it's for our sake because you see when satan began to try to take the glory of god that's when he began to think i could ascend you know if someone could share this particular scripture with me that i could ascend uh to 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 whatever to, to this place i i could become like god i will become god you know that scripture I, we, we need to read it here so that then it can we can we can state it and this is exodus chapter 34 verse 7 edwin dongo again eh edwin i'm so uh, thank you so much leo yani kusaidia umesaidia well done uh, 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 uh son of god asante sana so uh, exodus chapter 34 verse 7 saying keeping mercy for thousands forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin and who will by no means clear the guilty visiting the iniquity of fathers on the sons and on the sons of sons to the third and to the fourth generation okay and this is the basis for which we do deliverance okay this is the basis for which we do deliverance and some ministers have argued that deliverance is unnecessary but for me deliverance was necessary because i had struggled for 20 years of I'm born again, but I'm not really walking in the identity of who I am in Christ. God anoints me very heavily in 1997, but I still cannot seem to stand. And finally, in 2012, when I answered the call of God on my life, I said this to God. I said, I would like to understand before you anoint me again, I would like to understand why I fell the last time before you even do anything, before you send me out. And one of the things the Lord led me to learn is that I had not gone through deliverance. So the moment I prayed that prayer, within about it was i spread that prayer in in march and on june 1st and june 2nd suddenly there was this deliverance session in church and 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 i went for it thinking that i'm going to help my husband you know let me tell you when you need deliverance you will not know you need deliverance you will have an attitude you will be proud and you will be thinking you're the one who's standing and a lot of wives have this kind of a problem where we think that our husbands are the ones with a problem. Do you know I went to that thing thinking that I'm taking my husband because I thought I had been delivered because of reading Derek Prince's book, Blessings and Curses. And I thought, oh, that was done. You know, we finished that, you know. And I went and within, I kid you not, within about 10 minutes, 5 to 10 minutes of the introduction, I knew I had not come for my husband. I knew I had come for myself. And for me, that was when my breakthrough began. 
That was when my breakthrough began. And from that time onwards, I have not engaged in deliberate sin or messed around or done those silly things of quitting on God and giving up on God. But early this morning, I had a very strange experience. The Lord woke me up. I came to the living room. I knew I needed to have conversations with God, but I was really um, feeling like, you know, I, I, I can't enter before the presence of God. And I, 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 I leaned back on this seat and I thank God for this seat. I love this seat. And I leaned back on it and I just began to cry. And I was crying and crying. I, and I asked God, I said, God, the things I want to say to you, I don't want Satan writing down to accuse me. And I want to ask you to dismiss the demons that are here trying to write records and all those writing records. So I want to ask you to remove them so that I can just have a conversation with you. But if that's not allowed in terms of the atmosphere of heaven and the laws of heaven, because Satan then could argue that God is being unfair, if that's by any chance is not allowed, though by the way we can have a session with our righteous judge, I mean you can always have a session, you, you are allowed to have a session. Um, because anyway it's not an accusation situation in that case, it's your father and you can have that session. So I said to the father and I said, um, but God if indeed this is not something you will do, then help me then to say um, things in a way that will not cause accusation and when I'm having moments like those what I do is if I'm going to think something that Satan may use to accuse me if I'm going to say something that Satan may use to accuse me like for example God I, 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 I'm a loser for example you know I, it's not something I say but sometimes you feel like a loser you know or God I want to die you know something like that uh, that can be used to accuse you um, I, will say, I will say it with my mind I'll say it with my mind I'll not open my mouth I'll not open my mouth and therefore Lucifer cannot read what I'm saying because God can read what I'm saying and I don't mind it being recorded in the books of heaven that I came and I cried before God because even David at some point felt like he was going to die but he strengthened himself in the Lord. So I was, I, I was having this conversation with God and, and tears were falling down my, 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 my cheeks and I said, God, I, I, I thought we already dealt with this. I thought we already dealt with this thing where I feel like I can't come into your presence because I'm, I feel like I've done something wrong. And besides, I repented for whatever it is. And why am I beating myself down on this thing and all that? And, and I was just, you know, uh, and, and, and remember, always remember First John chapter 1, verse 9. Uh, this one you don't even need to put for me. It's if you confess your sins. Remember, you must confess your sins. When you confess your sins, God blots out the accusation of what you did from the book of accusation. It just disappears. Satan will not be able to find it. It is blotted out by the blood of Jesus Christ. I don't know whether it just vanishes or whether, you know, I don't know the dynamics of that. God has not revealed to me, but Satan cannot have it there. And if he tries to bring it up, then the books of heaven already record that you already confessed that sin. And a lot of us assume that because God knows we have done something wrong, we can just fix it by, do you know these friends, by the, there's a behavior that I hate. Eh? I hate this behavior. I hate this behavior where someone wrongs you and then expects that you'll just continue from where you left off and that you'll not discuss it. For me, we have to discuss what happened. And I, I realize that with some people, it's a wound in their lives where they're scared of talking about that thing. So they want to do something good and, and do something pleasing and nice, but not tell you, I'm sorry that I hurt you. And then we discuss, why did you hurt me? And why did you do that thing to me? So that then, yes, I've already forgiven you. Because you know, if you don't forgive somebody, you are accused already. Eh? That is, I think, Matthew 18, 21 to 35. You're accused. And by the way, when you don't forgive somebody, the accusation, what happens is you become, actually you are judged. You become judged. And the Bible says that it is God himself. Who hands you over to the tormentor imagine god hands you over to the tormentor and i guess that that must be it lead us not into temptation or whatever it is but he hands you into the tormentor imagine and who's the tormentor satan why unforgiveness yeah so 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 forgiving somebody is not negotiable once you understand that so so you must forgive whether the person has said sorry or not whether the person is going to repeat it or not whether the person is 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 seeming to be sorry or not Forgiving somebody is not negotiable because unforgiveness is one of the things that Satan will use and he will go before the courtrooms of heaven and say this person is holding unforgiveness. Therefore, hand them over to me. And God is bound by his word. God doesn't operate outside of his word. And, and God told me to tell you guys that he's feeling terrible because you keep handing yourselves over. And we, let me say we, we keep handing ourselves over to Satan. 
and making his case so easy you know because of doubting god and and and, and i'm closing now and um you know um i i need to read for you this uh scripture uh oh lord don't tell me i didn't record it so things like our conversations how we speak you know um there's first peter chapter 3 verse 16 saying having a good conscience so you must have a good conscience if you don't have a good conscience remember there's a scripture i used to know when i was in campus i used to say if you if you if you if your heart does not condemn you neither does god if someone could check for me whether there's that scripture because i used to use it in campus i picked it if your heart does not condemn you neither does god so in terms of you know things like for example for me i don't have a conviction that i should not wear trousers you know and and i wear trousers you know i try to make sure that the trousers are decent you know not the kind of trousers that will expose the birth canal kind of thing um or with a longer top but i don't have the conviction that earrings are, are wrong i don't have the conviction that makeup is wrong i don't have the conviction that you know i shouldn't have a weave and those things but i say to somebody that if you have a conviction that those things are wrong they don't do them you know i have friends who don't have piercings i have friends who don't wear trousers i have friends who you know and, and they are my friends and, and and they are wonderful friends of mine you'll never find them trying to tell me don't wear a trouser you know you never try to find them telling me don't wear earrings and and, and 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 if someone could find that scripture for me if your heart does not condemn you neither does god i think there's a scripture like that eh? but so having a good conscience you must have a good conscience if i'm going to wear something and it affects my conscience or if i'm going to do something and it's affecting my conscience of course some things whether it affects your conscience or not they're just wrong you can't go murder somebody and say oh i have a good conscience eh, eh, that is now wickedness yeah but you must have a good conscience so having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as of evil doers they may be ashamed that that falsely accuse you, you your good conversation in christ okay so this is just talking about uh, uh, uh accusation so somebody may decide to gossip about you and say oh that woman of god with her whatever it is or whatever it is or hey let me tell you you know uh, or whatever it is you know and and some things by them may, may even be true like remember the case of moses and i like this case of moses it really encourages me eh? the case of moses that when miriam and aaron were speaking it was true moses had married an ethiopian woman so i don't know whether moses had had a clean conscience um uh, about it but uh, uh moses was guilty moses was guilty i don't know whether maybe he had already repented before god that the, it was that one of all you know god i was in the desert and then whatever it was eh? but it was not no longer an accusation before god eh? Again, Brother Edwin here saying First John chapter three verse twenty one. Then you likes na loves This brother has worked this morning. Eh? <laughs> He's really worked this morning. So, beloved, if our heart does not accuse us, we have confidence towards God. Yes, yeah. So that's that's the scripture. Yeah. So if our heart does not con, con, con whatever. So you know things like even watch we watch on the screen if like for me i can't watch a sex a, a sex um a sex scene so if i'm watching a movie and and there's there's nudity or or anything even kissing now god has has stopped me from that eh? so i can't watch two people kissing in a movie i can't and and that one now is for this year by the way i mean before that i would watch and mm, french kissing ideas you know but I, so long as it doesn't move now into the sex yeah but now even kissing god has not allowed me to to watch that so what i'll do is that i'll i'll, I'll just forward the, the movie a little bit for that area if i should be watching that movie or having any business watching another movie but by the way incidentally for me i will watch a movie maybe once in a while but i'll find that when i'm moving greatly in the spirit of god i normally will not have any interest in watching a movie so i'll end up in such a situation maybe trying to use a, a particular movie maybe just to bring down in terms of the anointing because maybe i'm not sleeping and things like those eh? okay so, so 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 what i'm trying to tell you brethren is how important it is for things for you to have things like deliverance for you to understand your family bl bloodline for you to understand your altar that the family altar and the situation with your family altar the importance of being circumcised and being separated and and and, and leaving your family line especially if it's a wicked family line to to then begin a new lineage which is the lineage of jesus christ and 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 for you to understand those things because of accusations and things like those uh so we must understand those things we must understand um you know those things and all that so in 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 uh, the the heavenlies ignorance is not a defense and guess what 
in the laws of Kenya also, and in every nation, you can't say, I didn't know. You can never say, I did not know, okay? So, so you can't argue, I didn't know. So it's never a, an argument. If you're found to have broken the law, you can't say, I did not know. If it's in the law, uh, ignorance is not a defense, okay? And also in the courtrooms of heaven, um, uh, you know, ignorance is not a defense. So you must be able to understand. So it can't be that, you know, your grandfather killed somebody, murdered somebody, and I don't know why I'm talking about bloodshed a lot, but you know, bloodshed is a very sensitive scene, eh? It's a very sensitive scene. Killing somebody is a very sensitive scene. And, 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 you know, the Bible talks about the sins that lead to death. Okay? If someone could just find that scripture for me, that's that, 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 that sin that lead to death, that some sins lead to death, but some sins don't lead to death. There's something like that. And, 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 and the death that the Bible is talking about is that, uh, you know, uh, let me try and see if the Holy Spirit will help me uh, to, on how to explain this. Or let me wait for the scripture first, eh? then, then I can then share this. Eh? But, but it talks about some sins that lead to death, and some sins that don't lead to death. Now the person who's, who's clicking on angry, uh, is it like me who clicks and then the angry comes, or somebody's actually getting angry? If you're getting angry, I keep only, but hopefully it's, you know, and you know you can never correct it. Eh? It has happened to me as well. So um, whoever it is, if you're getting annoyed, or you're just clicking and finding yourself clicking because of two chubby fingers, whatever it is, anyway. So... Um, Somebody along your bloodline kills someone. The Bible says in, in Leviticus, and I can't remember Leviticus, I may tend to remember the scripture, but I don't remember. Because after all, when I deal with Satan, I say, it is written, you know? And so I quote, it is written. And, and I aspire to memorizing, but I've not been very good at that, but I'll know what the words of the scripture will say. So the Bible says that the life is in the blood, okay? The life is in the blood. Okay, somebody has just posted, but has not posted what it says. Okay, guys, if you help me to find the scripture, Find the scripture and then type also what the scripture says so that I quickly just read it out, okay? So, um, you know, so the life is in the blood. So if somebody takes away life, the Bible even says that if you take away life, life shall be taken, okay? If you take away life, life shall be taken. If you remember about Ahab, when Ahab petitioned God and talked to God and pleaded with God, what happened, I'm seeing Mrs. Mengere really loving the post, she's feeling the Holy Ghost in, in this year, um, and she's one woman who does not take lightly these things that I'm talking about. Eh? And, and it goes to war like crazy. I really admire that about her, one of my precious, precious uh, sisters, in, uh, covenant sisters in Christ. And, and um, the Bible takes, so, so, so life for life, eh? so a life for life, you know, uh, and, 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 and Satan will go and accuse that way, to take life. And by the way, Satan is so funny. He can pause and wait. He'll not bother that generation. He leave you all. Why? You're not a threat. Then you will leave maybe even a second generation and you're not a threat. Then there shall appear a person who is a threat in the family line. And that person is the David in that family line. And of course, a lot of times nobody even knows who the David in the family line is. And Satan will go before God and present his case and say that in, in the first generation there was murder. And therefore, your, your word says God, your word says that whoever takes a life, you know, their life shall be taken and can demand life from that home and sometimes can demand even a particular life. And say so they took the son of so-and-so at the age of three years and therefore their child is turning three years and I'm here and I, I, I'm, I'm feeling like I'm prophesying. Their child, their son is turning three years and so now, and you never know, somebody in the lineage could have petitioned or said to God, that when they have a child, that boy shall never turn to three. Let me give you a very interesting case that one time when I shared these things of deliverance and these things of accusation, a friend of mine told me. She told me about her family. They grew up in a very, very powerful, rich family. And um, uh, their, their, I don't know whether it was a grandfather or great-grandfather was a chief. Okay, And you know, in Kenya, if you're Grandfather, great grandfather, or chiefs, normally you'll be quite rich, eh? the Koinanges and those kind of people. But this one is a family in Western Kenya. So she was concerned because she was going to be turning 40 in about seven years. Yeah? And she was concerned at this point because she was fearing, because she was saying that women in their family never reach 40. So she decided to, um, when she had, with this actually because she's my friend and, and, and she's a dear close friend of mine and those days I wasn't really busy 
we decide we're going to pray about it. Because I'm like, hey, you can't die me, I can't bury you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we decide we're going to pray about it. So we went to war about it. Do you know what God revealed? Hmm. It normally takes just one person who will do the work. Eh? And that thing is broken. So God revealed that the grandfather was very, very promiscuous. So he would get a wife and then after he gets the wife and gets tired of them, he would chase them away. So at one point he got this woman and he, he, she was a child of a pastor and he married her. And uh, at some point now he wanted to get rid of her, but she refused. She said, no, marriage is for life according to the Bible. And he insisted, no, 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 you must leave. I want to marry another woman. I don't know why he didn't want to marry many women at the same time. Maybe expenses, maybe you're stingy. I don't know. I didn't really ever ask. But this is a true life story. And he said he, he couldn't get rid of her. She wouldn't leave. Born again Christian, wouldn't leave. I don't know what business she had being married to that family, but I guess, you know, we always make mistakes sometimes in our family lines and we don't understand, especially with identity. But she said she wasn't going to leave. Do you know this guy tried everything, she wouldn't leave. She's beaten, she doesn't leave. She's mistreated, she doesn't leave. Finally, do you know what the guy did? The guy accused her of witchcraft. And you know, uko mauluyani, ukianda kusema witchcraft, maukisi and all those you say witchcraft, it is drama. So what happened? The villagers took her and they went and they put her somewhere to burn her. So they tied her up, preparing to burn her. So... Um, as they were lighting the fire, she said, you have to allow me to speak. You have to allow me to speak. You have to allow me to say something. So she, she was asked, what, what do you want to say? She said, I want to pray. So they laughed at her and said, oh, the witch wants to pray. Do you know what she prayed? She said, Father, my God, today I've been accused falsely. And I want to say it in front of all these people. That God, if I am a witch, let me burn and go to hell. But God, if it is true that I am your child, then let nobody in this family ever live to my age. And guess what? Guess how old she was? She was 40. So all the women, uh, let no woman, uh, let no woman in this family ever live beyond my age. So, and with that, they lit her up, laughed. Of course, she died like that. Of course, you know, she went to heaven because she wasn't bitter. Though maybe she was bitter because she didn't seem to have forgiven, isn't it? Anyway, so I don't know what it is, but God had her petition somehow. So the reason why all the women in the family were not getting to 40 years of age was because of this woman's prayer. Blood must be um, vindicated. Yeah? Blood must be vindicated. Blood must be vindicated. All right, blood must be vindicated. You need to know that unless you repent. And repenting for blood is not the kind of, oh God, if we have ever killed anybody, then God forgive us. If someone has had abortions in your family, if someone has murdered someone in your family, then one of the things God has revealed to me that he does is that you, there's a kind of repentance you have to do. It is a godly sorrow that leads to repentance. It is not condemnation. Eh? It's not a worldly sorrow. So now you're beating yourself up. But normally it requires that you enter into a period of prayer and fasting where you're wailing before God for that soul and about that soul and pleading with God. Because remember, God will forgive you, but then sometimes the repercussions may still be there. Where am, where am I getting this from? David. David pleaded with God and God forgave him. Yeah, and Nathan told him, God has had your prayer, but the son died. Okay, the son still died. So, to be able to alleviate the repercussions, to be able to alleviate the disaster, there is a level of intercession and prayer. So, some, sometimes the, the repercussions could be that you end up being barren, the repercussions could be that your, your, your child ends up being barren and things like those. Um, yeah, so, and my battery is now pretty much at the end. So allow me to just close it there and, and just say, for those of you who are there, like saying, my oh, my oh, oi, 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 what am I going to do? Um, sorry, give me just a sec so that then the quality of the broadcast is not really interfered with. There we go. 
So for those of you who are at that place, you know, those are the things we deal in with deliverance. So there's that option that is available. And the deliverance doesn't have to be by me, but my prayer is that, of course, you will find someone who truly um, does, does, does deliverance. But also, as you read the word of God, the Lord will also lead you in terms of deliverance. But once again, I want to repeat that Lucifer is a senior advocate. He's a senior lawyer. Don't mess with him. Don't mess with him by doing what? Don't give him evidence. Don't give him things to go and take. Don't, don't take things lightly. Don't be a careless generation. Don't let your children be careless. Don't, you know, remember Job. Eh? Whenever he, they would have like a party and all those things, Job used to go and, and, and sacrifice for his, his children and his servants just in case they sinned. You know, so those are things we must do. When you go to God to pr in prayer, you have children. You go and you repent on behalf of your children, on behalf of your spouse. And you say, God, in case my spouse has, has whatever. Yeah? And sometimes you must be, as a woman, you must be like uh, Nabal's, uh, uh, like Nabal's wife, Abigail. The wise woman who runs before the king. Read about it. And, and keeps repenting for the spouse. And, and pleases, pleads with God for the spouse. You know, and says, my, my husband is a foolish man. You know, for the men, you know, my, my wife is, is, is being a, fo a foolish woman in this situation. So instead of insulting her and calling her names and saying, you're going to... And you know, those are the things as well. Satan will pick things like, you call your wife stupid and foolish. You're so thick. You know, Satan takes it and runs. And goes and says, the priest of the home has spoken a curse. And I would like to effect that curse. And God says, okay. And suddenly your wife is confused. She's thick. She's nothing is coming from her or you call her lazy and she becomes she actually begins to be lazy and all that and you're wondering this key wife of mine and all those things what did you do you're the priest of the home whether you have decided to take that role or not and whether you're born again or not you a man is the priest of the home so what kind of priesting are you priesting which which altar are you are you priesting at you know if you're drinking alcohol smoking sleeping around it always will affect your family you find that a lot of times your children are getting sick. You find children getting conversions. You find your home being, being, being attacked in different kind of demonic ways. And even though the wife is born again and this guy is really drinking, drinking. And by then let me tell you, the, the, the laws of the heavenlies, the authority of the woman in the home, if she's married, is different from the authority of the man. The, a lot of times you can find that and I found that women can be doing very funny things and they can be weaker in terms of their faith sometimes even maybe not born again or whatever it is but the home is strong and it stands because the man is the right priest and the priest that it's supposed to be but also don't be discouraged yeah don't be discouraged women you can stand as a woman of strength as a woman of valor in your family and in your line and be able to see deliverance of God in your family even though your spouse was not covering you and was not operating but the thing you do need to note is that your spouse exposes you if they walk in saying they expose you okay so as you're crying about how your spouse is having an affair you need to know that the bigger issue is not even your spouse having an affair so you're having feelings of heart which by the way you know is, is very very painful but you need to also understand the accusation that then comes in. And may the Lord help you to have the strength to be able to deal with it. And sometimes you will find, what was it? You know, uh, but they have, and have dealt with some weird things in deliverance. Eh? I've dealt with things where someone's husband is having affairs, cheating, cheating, cheating. And then I go to God praying and asking God, what is it God? What is Satan using? And, and Satan comes to the courtroom of heaven and says, why is your, why is your servant here? Why is, why is she here to come and tear this person? Yeah? While yet, uh, this, this, you know, uh, uh, it says that, you know, there's a scripture that, and I always forget it, and I think I did forget it deliberately. There's a scripture that says that nobody of illegitimate birth shall ever stand before the assemblies, the assemblies of God. Not even two, I think ten generations. Eh? If someone can find that one for me. That, 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 the day God gave me that scripture, I was so scared so you're born again all right but your prayers are not standing because even though you've gotten born again you've not yet dealt with the issue of that you are born outside of wedlock so satan then goes and the thing with the things of god is if you wait upon the spirit of god he will show you 
he'll tell you this thing. So what do you do? You go to the presence of God and you forgive your parents for having you outside of wedlock. And then you go and say, I am not of a legitimate birth. I thank you, Father, because your word says that I have been adopted into the family of God. And so I am a child of God. So even when, you're, when Satan is trying to find accusations, you give Jesus Christ, who is our advocate, who can never be defeated. The only reason why he would lose a case is when you have compromised yourself. You know, you've compromised yourself, you've messed yourself up, you know. So, because even if you have the best advocate in the whole world, but then you, you go ahead and, you know, like the case the other day of those children who, who were given an ambulance and put behind in an ambulance, and then they took selfies laughing and saying, yeah, we're in an ambulance, we, you know, those kind of things. Eh? Uh, uh, you know, they, they can whatever, although again, you know, with such cases, you can still, if you're a smart lawyer, you can still find a way, da 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 but still, anyway. Um, but what I'm saying is, you can be a brilliant lawyer, but you have a stupid, um, and allow me to use the word stupid, but you have a stupid or foolish, um, uh, 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 what is it called? Cli uh, cli what is it called? Not client. Yeah, client. Yeah, you have a foolish client. So the client compromises you. So whether it is that your client sends a message saying, I have hired the best lawyer in the world, and so even though I killed them, I'll never get away with it. That is a written statement. That is a thing where you're saying that you kill them. Or maybe you, you are murdering somebody and you took a video of where you're murdering the person for whatever ridiculous thing that you are doing. Uh, uh, and, and, and those are the things that we have to be careful about. So we are giving Jesus a really hard time, children of God, based on that we are being foolish clients to him. I know we are not his clients, really, but in the courtrooms of heaven, he's representing us as our lawyer, and therefore we would be considered to be the accused. I think the terminology is really the accused, because there are all criminal cases there that in the courtrooms of heaven, you know? And, 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 and even things like, you know, when you take somebody's husband, or when you sleep with somebody's husband, you know, the, the, it says that uh, nothing should separate uh, what God has brought together, let nothing uh, bring asunder. But these two people got married in church, and they entered into a covenant that said, till death do us part, okay? And then you come and you start sleeping with that person. And one time I was praying for somebody and I kept seeing a coffin. And I'm wondering why I'm seeing a coffin. And then I turned and I said, is your child the child of a married man? And she looked shocked. And then she said, yes, but you know, I repented, etc., etc., etc." But imagine the accusation was Satan was going before the courtrooms of heaven and still accusing that woman because of having been with a married man. So if you've slept with a married man or you slept with a married woman, you become death. Satan literally goes to the courtrooms of heaven and says, when these two, you know God, you're the one who joined them, eh? and they got married in church, and this is the vow that they said, and till death do us part, and you know a cord of three strands is not easily broken, and God, you know you're the one who holds together the marriage, and so you must keep your your, your, your word. You must keep the covenant that you entered into with them till death do them part. So people die. I, I had someone call me to request me to pray for their friend who had cancer. And as I was trying to pray for the friend who had cancer, I asked, is she born again? And I was, I can't remember what the answer was. But then as I was trying to pray in the courtrooms of heaven, Satan appeared and he said, why is she here? Why is she petitioning? And this person, and, and it's normally a flash, eh? it's seconds. And, and why is she here? Why, why is she petitioning? And yet, um, he's with someone's wife. So I said, hi, um, is she married? The person says, yeah, yeah, she's married. And then I said, is she married to someone who was married? And she says, yes, she's married to someone who was married. And I say, I can't proceed. You know, I can't proceed because Satan is standing before the courtrooms of heaven and accusing her and calling her death. And that's why she has cancer. And I told her, go to your friend, lead her to Christ, ask her to repent. If it's possible for, him to, for her to leave that man, it would be better for, for her to leave that man. But if it's not possible for her to leave that man, let her negotiate with God and see whether perhaps the Lord can allow for whatever reason, that maybe she wasn't born again or whatever it is. You see, our God is very merciful in some ways, and sometimes he allows some things. The Lord bless you, children of God, um, and may we not walk in ignorance. Ignorance is not our portion in Jesus' name. It looks like our videos are now videos of two hours, and, and so, you know, uh, <laughs> that is the new norm. But I pray that you've been greatly edified, but also that, uh, you know, 
the videos I do are just to help you understand uh, things, to equip you, according to Ephesians chapter 4. And basically, um, you know, once you're equipped, then you can go and pray. And a lot of times you find, because, you know, I'm a prophet, I'm an apostle, but I'm a prophet as well. I'll be speaking, and depending on the person who ever uh, get this video, you will have an aha moment of, oh, that's what it is. You've already been praying. But through the video, suddenly it makes a lot of sense, you know. So, so, so it's not something new, and for some of it, it's also just teaching you and, and, and whatever. But above all, beloved, do not sin deliberately. It's too expensive. It's too expensive, you know. Do not sin deliberately. And, and, and this morning as I was crying in the presence of God, one of the things I was telling him is, I, I feel like I hurt you with this situation, Lord. And, and, and in fact, I was asking, God, you've chosen me for revival, but will I, will I fail you when you give me revival? And I told him, God, if I will fail you when you give me revival um, in this nation, in the nations of the world, then don't give me revival. That's what I said to him. I said, if I will receive revival and I will be somebody who will be recorded as having been in a revival movement and led revival, and then after that I, 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 I fall and, and, and hurt you, then don't give me revival. Because for me, I want to finish well. I want to be present at the marriage supper of the Lamb. I want to enter heaven. I, I, and, and I know... I, I would rather enter heaven without ministering than minister and then miss heaven. You know, because God did not create me to, he, he, he created me to minister, yes. But, and, and by the way, now for me, I'm at the place where I know if I don't minister, that is sin. You get what I mean? That is sin. So for me, it's no longer an available option of saying, let me not minister and sit at the feet of Jesus. I have to minister. And you know how God taught me this? And I hope my video doesn't go off. One day, I went to a place where there was um, this guy who um, one of my spiritual daughters was really talking about a lot and I said ah, let me go with her so that I can go and see because she's really on and on about this place and I said let me go and let me tell you fallacies the guy was a false prophet a good one I was in shock as in I'm sitting there and I'm like hey eh? he said what huh as in you know and you know normally when there's a false prophet there's always somebody who's kind of sitting by looking like they're like shakarara, and what they're doing is just observing to see whether they're succeeding in fooling people. And they kept looking at me and getting really uncomfortable. And then, you know, we move and I'm thinking, oh, maybe my daughter will notice that I'm getting uncomfortable. At some point, I have to stand up and go to the washroom to wash my face, you know. And at some point, she's saying, oh, my hands are burning, my hands are burning, and I don't know what, 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 what. And I'm like, He's a false prophet. Your hands are burning for what? Because the person was speaking and saying, some of you are feeling fire in your hands. And she's saying, my hands are burning. My hands are burning. And she's like, my hands are burning. And she's uncomfortable. It's like, I want it to stop. And it's not stopping. I said, my friend, the Holy Spirit doesn't work that way. The Holy Spirit will never cause your hands to burn. You're feeling like they're going to explode. And you want him to stop. And he doesn't stop. That is Lucifer, my friend. Those are strange fires. So I went, at this point, I went to the bathroom. And I, I, I kind of just washed my face and then I looked in the mirror and I started crying. I'm like, my God, what is this? And then do you know what God said to me? He told me, if you do not preach, these are the characters who will preach. So that's why I preach. He said, if you do not preach, these are the characters who will preach. And, and so that terrifies me. And they're still preaching. But because at least we, we are a loud voice and, and there are many men of God and women of God who are rising and I'm loving the online platform and the ministration online. I've got many friends I've been trying to tell to minister online and they've not been ministering online and they're, 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 they're doing so well. They're doing beautifully, taking it to it like a duck to water and I'm trusting God that after the COVID-19 that will still remain their norm. You know, part of COVID-19 forced us to get online. And by the way, guys, we are trusting God and if you're a technical person, please begin to develop uh, an app where we can go online as pastors uh, and as ministers uh, we can go online without the disruptions of your video has disappeared you know on these secular platforms make your own Facebook as a believer that is for believers where we can have our videos there we will support you, we will stand there, we will come there and, 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 you know, we can even probably subscribe and everything. But we are looking forward to those platforms. Because, I mean, I keep looking for videos sometimes and I cannot see that video. I'm like, I preached on this. Like, I was looking for the priesthood and kingship video and I couldn't see it anywhere. And I'm like, eh, I preached on this. I know I preached on it, so I'm not like, you know, it's a recent video. 
But um, in closing, guys, just saying, don't, don't be ignorant. And of course, we keep on equipping you. We, we continue to help you to, to, to stand with the things of God. Um, if you want to grow, you will grow. And we said in, in Sozo, I mean, really, we are all brothers and sisters in Christ. We don't exalt people. Obviously, there is honor. The vessel you do not honor, cannot, you cannot receive from. By the way, that's another thing. You cannot dishonor somebody. And, and, and expect to receive from them. So that's the other thing you need to be able to understand. To be able to receive from the anointing, you do have to honor. And um, there's a very powerful message about honor. I've preached on it, but also my sister uh, Rose preached more powerfully than me on it and, uh, and on honor and what honor is. Eh? Yeah. Amen. So God bless you guys and have a powerful and blessed day. And may the Lord show you what you need to do to ensure that you know, there's no accusation that is coming against you, especially from the bloodlines um, that, that, that come from before. I've talked a lot about bloodline cleansing, so it's up to you just to go and check on the YouTube channel. The YouTube channel is Apostle Kathy Kageni Uganga. Uh, that's the name of the YouTube channel, Apostle Kathy Kageni Uganga. So don't look for Sozo Church. We don't have Sozo Church of God as a YouTube channel. Um, it is under Apostle Kathy Kageni Uganga. So God bless you and thank you so much for watching. If this video has ministered to you, please share it somewhere. And as you do, please pray that the person will not feel like, oh, it's a two-hour video, that the Holy Spirit will lead them to actually watch uh, the video. God bless you all so much. And please register for the deliverance session if you are able to and uh, continue to trust the Lord to make a way for you in terms of knowing what you need to get done. I'm ending the video. Amen. Shalom. God bless you all so much. Remember to armor up. Armor up every single day. Amen.